I, I was running a festival called Happy New Years from 96 onwards. And um, Happy New Years was basically a festival for new music, adventurous music, um, where we mixed all kinds of stuff together. Uh, where we mixed uh, written contemporary music with improvisation, with electronic music, with uh, rock and pop artists who were looking for new borders. And it was through this work um, that um, in 1999, I for the first time, um, we for the first time did a creation of uh, a few artists that would, that would have uh, had an importance for me in, in, in the work I did afterwards. And they were called Pierre Bastien, uh, Pierre Berthet and uh, Frédéric Le Genter. Um, in French, they will call them nouvelle lutterie, the, the ones who make new instruments, new kinds of instruments. And uh, Nicole already showed uh, a number of people uh, that she presented all, also that uh, can also get into this uh, framework. But 1999 was, was uh, this project was called 110 square meters, which was the surface of our stage uh, at the Limelight Arts Center. Um, and that was com completely full with stuff, uh, stuff of mechano instruments, uh, Pierre Bertet, his uh, long uh, wires, uh, Frédéric Le Junter, who worked with a lot of literary junk uh, to make his sound with, and we created a sort of performance with this. And this was for me the start, because we, in the framework or, or in the context of that, we uh, made our first exhibition, which was, a, which was an exhibition of these three guys, uh, which was a start to trigger a lot of uh, other uh, presentations, basically from 2002 onwards, under the title Audio Frames and Later Sounding City, Klinkenstadt in Flemish. Um, the thing is that um, this also explains a bit the, the, the background that I have also. I'm a, I'm a festival organizer and I, I come from music. Um, and I still do uh, a festival that now is called Father's Festival Kortrijk, uh, which is part of a, a, an eight festival network here in Flanders. Every festival is independent. But um, in this festival we mix uh, contemporary music, um, adventurous music, classical music. Uh, that is the first chapter. And sound art is a very important chapter for us. Uh, that's the two chapters our festival is thriving on. If you want some information, it's on the back on the table. Um, it's important that um, musicians who played with boundaries of, uh, of organizing sound, I would like to call it, uh, were the part of the, or the point of departure for me also. There was also um, a year or two ago uh, when we were in Norway for, uh, for a show, for a, for a a symposium called Ephemeral Sustainability. Um, that was Helga Lamotte also referring to this. There's a lot of uh, sound artists who started out their work as performers, and she referred to people like uh, Max Neuhaus, who was a percussionist, for instance, uh, and uh, people like Mariana Maché, etc., and the people I named already. They, were, they came from this performance background. Um, and it's really... Um, it's really important to our festival, in any case, that we encounter a lot of these artists who find it important also to show another part of their work in doing performances. So we try always, if we have an opening, uh, to if people we had, just we had uh, Otodate by uh, Akio Suzuki, who was named already a few times in, in, in this uh, talks, um, and we had a concert with Akio and Aki uh, doing, their, uh, doing a wonderful concert. And I think it's, it's, it's enriching to see how people have an other aspect of their, of their work uh, by, showing it, uh, by showing their performances. Um, I think if we talk about sound art, um, you have um, really a number, and I will, I will run this um, very randomly. Um, if you have questions afterwards about it, I can explain it a bit to you. Uh, I start with the exhibition that is on for the moment, which is the Bernhard Leitner exhibition, Space Sound, Body Space, which was curated by Karsten. And uh, we had a really nice time together with uh, 
Bernhard and Karsten to make it uh, in Kortrijk. Um, it's until the, the publicity now. It's until the 25th of, of May, so you still have till Sunday to come and see it. Please do. You have a number of different entries also for sound artists. You have people who work in this... I like the concept of organized sound, who are not talking about music, like, for instance, Bernhard Leitner, who um, is creating these audio auditive spaces, makes sculpt spaces with, with, with sound, with audio, um, doesn't want to have any reference to, although he composes these spaces, he doesn't want to have any reference to music at all uh, in, in regarding his work. But I think this, this points out, if we, if we see how people get different entries, that you, uh, have, um, that you have no generalistic approach to uh, sound art whatsoever, or what is called sound art. And I think um, you have, for instance, in, in Germany, you have the, the big definitions about Klangkunst, uh, where you have people like Hel Helga Lamott Haber and other people who really studied this very, very carefully and also did very precise definitions of what it should be and character characteristics of what it should be. I do not want to argue with Helga. You never argue with Helga. You can argue with Helga, but uh, I do not want to argue with her. She's a very learned academic. Um, but. I have sometimes some um, some reluctance to catch these art forms into one definition, um, and that's why I not to to create a very easy stir or to keep, create a cheap discussion. But that's why, for me myself, the the definition art with sound works much better than uh, any longer uh, definition. Um, because it has no exclusivity in it, it has it, it includes uh, the people who work with sound, and you can have your aesthetic or your cont uh, content uh, um, uh, preferences and in your choices you make as a curator or as an artist. But I think um, we should not exclude it, and it's 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 an art form that uh, has a very specific uh, kind of way of working and also numerous kinds of way of working. That's why also I think at a, at, a certain, um, at a certain moment we, and I already mentioned it to the people who followed the, the BAM uh, meeting this morning, um, you have also a sort of uh, splendid isolation if we use the word uh, sound art. I think it is, um, I, 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 I would like to see that in a certain moment it opens up to art, um, and I hear, I, I gladly hear the people from uh, Overton uh, saying, we are working in an art context, and I think that's where sound art should be also. It should be in an art context, a general art context, uh, where people uh, can appreciate it next to other arts, next to other important work of arts, you have other important works of sound, art that use sound, with sound. Um, there's a, big, there's a bit of a problem sometimes, because in, in museum-wise, there's a very funny story about um, if, if, you make a, if you make a collection, there was an old lady coming to me in the first exhibition I did in 2002, and she apparently was a collector, and uh, she came to me and she said, my dear fellow, it's all very nice, but what is it worth? And uh, I was telling to her at that time, I have no clue, my dear lady, I can only say what I have paid the artist to make this happen. Uh, but I think it's an issue also for making collections. When collectors want to buy work, they see it as an investment also. And I think um, I think also when you had video art, Namjoon Park, the first things he did, um, I think that was also a problem. It is very, very uh, hard to stick the value on things. Other thing is that if we go to museums, um, acoustics are not the prime directive for uh, building a museum. Um, you have you have um, a kind of very problematic situations now and then where museums are not built to work with sound. They are built to put a nail in the wall and to put a painting on the wall. Um, and this means that you have to work on this uh, in museums. And there's an experience I had. I made a small exhibition in uh, the, that was called Den Frie Lut. Um, where people who are here in the room, uh, some, some artists were present. Um, and this is a fantastic gallery, um, and it's, it's a nearly impronounceable name in Danish for me. It's, I will try it. It's Frie Utstillingsbygnung or something. Um, and um, it's a beautiful building uh, that was owned by a cooperative of artists. It, it was owned by them for about 100 years and, and, and processing. Um, and it's wood 
and it's sound leaking and it's letting it's letting every sound uh, in and I was presenting my plans to the to the directors of this uh, gallery and they I presented a lot of silent works and they were quite disappointed uh, about uh, that there were one only four or five works and two that there was much silence in the works and I had to explain to them which was for me was very obvious uh, that you uh, cannot present sound works uh, on top of each other and I have to say this seems very trivial but I went recently like a year and a half to a so-called or it is it was an important I, I say it a bit triggering but a so-called important uh, uh, exhibition sound art in a German city that begins with a K and um, I think they succeeded in uh, bashing the world record sound uh, installations by square meter, um, but in another way, it, it was impossible to, uh, to, to experience or to appreciate each work on itself. It's like a museum would hang three paintings uh, uh, on top of each other, and then you ask you to appreciate the different works. But I think it's, it's very trivial, but it's still very, very something we have to keep in mind. It's sound, art with sound makes sound, so you, uh, you, you, you try to present it as good as possible. And I happily, I, I, I succeeded in, in convincing the, the two girls in, in Denmark, and it went, it went really well, and they understood uh, why it went that way. And the third thing also with getting in museums is also that um, the staff of museums is not trained to work with sound. We have several problems. And also, I think if we see in the short uh, period that sound that was created, um, if we only think about the, f about the format of, uh, of the sounds that were uh, produced at that time, the, the, the format they were on, we are talking completely different formats for the moment. So, I think it needs, if we talk about conservation of art, uh, conservation of art with sound, um, it is a specific skill that you have to have. And I think it's very important if you want to get in there that we also enter these specific skills to people. Um, but th I think also that also technicians that, that work in, in museums without, uh, without vexing any one of them, but they know how to put a, a painting very well and, and, a, and a sculpture very well. But if you ask him to, to deal with sound and speakers, you have to bring in a uh, qualified technician. The only technician we had, and Arnold can, can vouch for that, the only technician we had in Denmark was a carpenter. And he looked very astonished uh, when we asked him several questions to, to work on this. But still, um, it is, I think it's changing a bit. And um, if I see that, for instance, the State Museum in Amsterdam is already buying some sound pieces, uh, like ones from Pierre Bastien, you see that there's an opening, um, and I'm very glad for this. I think the next step would also be that uh, sound, wo art, uh, sound works, uh, uh, art with sound, gets together in exhibitions with uh, other artworks, and that you have curators working together and sharing their expertises uh, to make exhibitions that really bring these works together and make uh, content uh, with teams or with other, with other systems, make exhibitions that or mingling different forms of art. And I, I think, for me, it is a very tempting idea in anyhow to have this. Um, but I have no idea what's happening here, so I will do it like this. I will point, ah, it's the finish. That's why it's not working, okay. Um, so what we did um, for, um, I start with 2002 again. Um, what we, what we do as a festival is that we uh, have invested a lot in these sound art exhibitions. Um, and I plead guilty, of course, because we put it also in this isolated form as a, as a music festival. Um, but um, we have uh, presented it uh, for the first time, we did it in an old factory where we had group exhibitions, especially of different people presenting their work. Um, and we did this for three years in cooperation with the city of Lille, where we, we are very close to France and the city of Lille. And we presented it under the name Audio Frames. Um, but from 2005 onwards, we do it as Sounding City, which was uh, first getting the form of a parkour uh, in the city, where we presented in different spaces, different sound works. So each space would have one sound work where we uh, present this work. Um, it evolved because when we stopped the festival Happy New Year's, it evolves 
also into other things. And the pictures you see now is something we uh, started up. Karsten was one of them, and also Bart, who is in the room. Uh, we started up the um, uh, Resonance Network, uh, which was um, an idea of bringing together some European artists. And it involves also the, the aid to production of uh, sound works, um, in which we asked different people to uh, um, create new works in residencies uh, in different uh, European cities. And the result of it, there was, there, it was not easy to keep on going the, the network because there were some financial issues, etc. But the result is, uh, if, you keep it, if you keep it in mind, the result is that 14 <coughs> new works have been created into a period of about 48 months and that these individual 14 artworks have been presented for 50 times throughout Europe. So that was really that was really a nice uh, that's the, the the nice result that I would like to keep in mind about it and I think it is for us it was very well, worthwhile to invest in this production of new works because there's not a lot of residency programs for uh, for artists uh, who deal with sound and I think it's important that them also can uh, make their work. Um, in the last few years, we had we worked on several topics, and it can be one artist, like we do the Bernard Leitner exhibition uh, this year, but it can also be a specific topic like sound sound art in public spaces that we did in 2012, uh, where we had uh, 12 pieces that were presented into the city. The latest thing that we um, have started um, last year uh, was the creation of a collection of uh, sound walks um, because we put the emphasis very much on the listening perspective on, on, on this thing. It's called Listen to This and it's, uh, it's, um, it's a kind of a homage to first one to a book by, uh, by the, the guy from uh, to New York, Ross. Uh, who made an essay about music and about uh, about sound? And it's also this small movement that people tell you, "Come, come and listen to this. Have you have you heard this?" And I think it's important because we were talking about the perspective also of of listening. Um, in this way, I make a reference, for instance, to watching. If you know that in the Metropolitan Art Museum in New York, they calculated that average uh, time that people look at one painting is 17 seconds. In the Louvre, it's even less. It's about, I, I don't know the figure by heart, I think it's 13 or 14 seconds that the Mona Lisa is worth looking. Um, but it, it also tells something about concentration, about the, the eye for detail for people. And I think we don't have to whip them to, 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 to make them listen or, or look again. The only thing we can do is give them some propositions and, and artists can give some propositions. And that's why I had a long discussion about this with uh, my good friend Karsten, uh, who started to say, I hate sound walks. And <laughs> then I wrote an article for him uh, for the magazine Position, for Position and, um, in which I explained my, my point of view in that. And I think also that's been named already the ecological uh, perspective of, this, of it is, is important, and historically also, if we talk about Schaefer and, and, and other people, and Hilda Arda Westerkamp, um, who says that the, the fact of, of, of doing a sound walk is the intention to listen, and that's the only thing. When Max Neuhaus uh, went out to do his listen project, he was performing a lot of pieces uh, as a percussionist where city sounds were included. And he had the idea, well, let's take the people outside and let's go to listen to the city again. Um, I think that uh, people who live in our town, if I ask them, what is the, how does your house look like? They will give me a very accurate uh, description of that. If I ask them, what does your environment listen like? They, most of them are looking at me like I'm pointing them to a crazy question. But in fact, it's even important to have a good quality of sound environment as a visual environment. And um, what we did is we invited now three artists that we, uh, that we asked to make a, a sound walk for our city. Um, and sound walk is actually too short for uh, what it does. It is a, a listen proposition and a looking proposition. We have uh, Christina Kubisch who did electrical walk Kortrijk and also uh, David Helbig, who is doing the Kortrijk tracks. Um, and the last one, the last addition we had was uh, Akio Suzuki, his Autodate Kortrijk. 
And on this way, and our festival, uh, maybe my voice uh, uh, is... Uh, is telling it our festival is running near the near the end of the of the festival now. We end on the 25th, but I'm very happy that people take this opportunity to 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 take this proposition also and to look in another way uh, to the city and to listen in another way to the city. Um, and we hope we can do afterwards. It's it's the idea that it will be ongoing, but. Um, Eternity and ongoing is a bit a strange thing. It does remind me of in Belgium we have the one percent rule. If you have a public building um, or a, or a street that is inaugurated, you have to invest one percent in art that is connected to this. And it has already had horrible artworks on roundabouts, etc. So we don't want to do forever, but uh, for a number of years we will uh, we will keep on going with this uh, with this collection of sound works of sound walks. And uh, I'm very happy that people take this opportunity to go and listen. And I invite you all, if you're all uh, in the beautiful city of Kortrijk, to come and do one of these walks and one of these propositions.